Hi, and welcome back to Dungeons and Dry Brushing. My name's Daniel, and uh, this is Fido. Now, we're going to be doing the last of our Halloween crafts today. We've already made a, a blood fountain, some spider swarms, and today Fido's going to help us make a ruined portcullis. Now, as soon as I saw Fido, I knew he was going to be helping me in a video. But uh, I haven't actually made a game plan yet, I just have a general idea of what I want to do. So today you're going to be watching me wing it a little bit, and we'll figure out afterwards what went right and what went wrong. So our first step is going to be a bit of surgery for Fido. We're just going to remove the skull that we intend to use, and then take off the jaw as well. At that point, it's time to remove his uh, little strange skeleton doggy ears. Just take an X-Acto knife and cut straight through the plastic. You're going to want to be careful doing this, and just take the usual precautions, not cutting towards yourself, that sort of thing. These cheap, thick plastics can be a bit difficult to work with, so just be careful. Next, I take a brick of XPS foam and just trace a rough outline of the project size and shape on it. I'm going to cut this out with a hot wire tool, so the outline is not going to be followed exactly anyways, but it's good to have a bit of guidance as you go. After that, I take a bit of sandpaper and just use it to smooth down some of the edges and give them a more rounded appearance. You are going to want to wear a mask while you're doing that. Trust me, you don't want to breathe this stuff in. Next it's time to begin putting the texture on the foam. I'll begin by marking off one inch lines all across both sides of the piece. After that, I'm going to just mark the individual bricks by using the length of my thumb. It's a rough measurement, but it doesn't have to be consistent. It's for an old ruined building, so if it's a little rough and each brick looks a little bit different, that's perfectly fine. Once the lines are drawn on, I go over them with a knife to deepen the grooves, and then once more with a pen to widen and bevel the grooves. Then you want to add some texture to the piece. To do this, I'm just using a tightly rolled ball of tinfoil, and just using some force, you rub it over the entire piece of terrain. That's going to give us a stony texture. You can enhance that by using a pen to draw some cracks and lines to add to the ruined effect. And finally, I use the other side of the pen to depress some of the bricks to make it look like they're uneven or sunk in. To make the actual portcullis itself, we're going to use cross-stitch grating. This stuff's easy to work with and it can create a nice effect. I'm going to roughly cut it to size, and then I am actually using wire clippers to cut sort of a pattern into the grating itself, just to add a bit of visual flair. This is pretty much as exciting as it looks, a very tedious process, but I like how it turns out. If we can pause here for a moment, just so I can ask you guys to like and subscribe to the channel, that would be great. It's a huge help for small YouTube channels, and I really appreciate it, everyone who already has done that. In addition to that, 
I noticed while I was picking out Fido here that uh, something I've never seen before is someone trying to do this sort of crafty video but with Christmas decorations instead of Halloween. I understand why, that's going to be a lot more difficult. Uh, you know, Santa and Frosty don't exactly lend themselves to D&D as well as bats and you know, evil pumpkins and skeletons and that kind of thing. But I thought it could be an interesting video. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments below. The cross-stitch grating gets attached with hot glue. You do have to be a little bit careful here because this can melt the foam if you're not careful. And the skull gets attached the same way. Just a lot of hot glue and be careful in your positioning because once it's on there, that's, that's pretty much it. And the last piece of surgery on poor Fido is just to cut his jaw in half. Sounds a little grim when you put it that way, I guess. And trim the back parts of it so that I can attach it to the wall. And then it's time to prime. So this was my first time using the Army Painter Foam Friendly Spray Paint. Um, it seems to have worked pretty well. It preserved all of the textures and things like that. It didn't melt anything but it's taking forever to dry. I have already been waiting like 40 minutes for this. Uh, it's kind of put an end to my workflow for the day, which I wasn't expecting. I think maybe, I don't know, I don't know if something's just wrong with the can I got or, or something else, but uh, I won't be using that in the future unless it's for the last step of the day or I have a lot of time to let it dry because 40 minutes for spray paint to dry is just, just insane. But it is what it is, so for this project, we'll just have to move on. With the piece primed, it's time to paint. This is going to be a relatively simple paint job. I'm just using a large dry brush and going over the entire surface with a medium brown. This is more of an overbrushing than a dry brushing, so you're gonna to wanna to use a fair bit of paint still on the brush. Make sure you get the skull and even the grating as well while you're doing this. Once that's done and dried, I come back in with a light, almost tan brown and do the same thing. Except just a little bit less paint. If this looks too bright to you right now, that's fine because this is going to get dulled down with a wash later on and that will bring everything a little more back in line with where we want it. Make sure to get the top of the terrain as well, and you definitely want to make sure to catch all of the details on the skull. In fact, I do come back with a final highlight of Ushabdi bone just on the skull itself, since that's where we want people's eyes drawn, that's where we want the brightest and highest highlights. Finally, I come in with my homemade black wash. That's just black ink, water, and dish soap. I take a generous brush and apply it to the entire terrain piece. This is going to give us darker shadows and bring all of our highlights more in line with each other. And as a final step, I'm taking some orange paint and just dry brushing a little bit of it onto the grating to give it a rusty look. It is ruined after all, we don't want bright shiny metals here. And there we are, the finished piece. Okay guys, there we are, the last of our Halloween projects down. That was fun. Now, while you might not be able to make these exact crafts yourself, depending on what you can find at your local dollar store or you, the needs of your game, you might not need these projects. I think the important thing here is actually just the spirit of it. 
of going out, picking up something, you know, that's not going to be used or going to be used once and thrown away, and instead turning it into something cool and creative for your games. Alright, let me know in the comments if you would like to see this done, something similar done with Christmas decorations instead of Halloween decorations. I don't know how that will go, but it's something I'm thinking about. And uh, let me know if you'd like to see this turned into a set of ruins, maybe, um, to go along with this theme and construction. Thanks. See you on the next one.